What's up everyone? Chris Blevins here, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna take a look at how I set up my Hobie Pro Angler 14, fishing for coastal inshore species here in San Diego. Let's take a look. Okay, so starting from the stern of the boat, we can see this is a Hobie Mirage Pro Angler 14. I have the Hobie flag on the back. This is just because it sticks more than three feet out of the back of my truck and so it needs a, a flag for it. So pretty much just stays on there all the time. Doesn't seem to get in the way. Coming forward, you can see I keep my Hobie paddle here broken down. Hobie bait tank, I believe this is the first version of the Hobie bait tank. I haven't added the extra rod holders, but I plan to add extra rod holders to this Hobie bait tank. I've also had to do, I had the power supply switch fail, so I had to upgrade to a new power switch for this, so that's kind of a custom job. For the certain times when I'm fishing for smaller species or perhaps small halibut, I'll bring the buckboard, the Hobie hog trough, uh, legal size for halibut, 22 inches, so you want to have a way to measure them if you're planning on taking them. I have this cheap bait net here, uh, Spanish mackerel. They got, and some other fin bait have sharp spines, so sometimes it's good to have the bait net to scoop out your bait. I use the flush mount rod extender here. I like this for, it's easy to grab out of there, so having a rod ready to cast or for putting my fly line in, it's nice to have because it gets your rod up nice and high and can avoid tangling, any, tangling with any of the other tackle. I also like this H rail mounted rocket launcher. This is actually what my camera is in a lot of the times, but also this is even better access. I'll be careful with it on the rail over here though, because when you move it out to here, this position you can, that you control with, uh, I would caution against putting a dropper loop in there because it's kind of far out away and as you're grabbing for it, you may uh, lose your balance. A PFD. Kokotat Bahia. Uh, this thing's pretty hammered. Probably gonna be time to replace this soon, but served me well over the years. I prefer the foam flotation PFD as opposed to the CO2 charged method. Just, I mean, I just want something that I know is gonna float. Those mechanisms are pretty bulletproof, but uh, you do wanna maintain them and inspect them, make sure there's no damage to the CO2 inflation mechanism. Hobie Pro Angler has this Vantage C, which is great. Two positions. If I'm launching to the surf, it's in the low position. I can also put it in the high position here to have a better vantage point for sight fishing. Some of the things I'll bring in my side pockets. Butter knife for removing bait from speaky. Bait knife for various cutting tasks and some aluminum pliers. Also I will use the standard Horizon HX210 floating VHF. In the cockpit we also have my four foot Calcutta gaff. I really like to use a four foot gaff. Also this, this one's nice and thin and light, easy to handle. You guys see the gaff shots that I get. A lot of it has to do with having a long light gaff small small hook relatively speaking in the gap for the size of the fish but i like to keep that in the cockpit ready to use this 2019 pro angler has the mirage drive 180 system so forward and reverse looking inside my hatch you'll see this is where i'll keep my tackle got this waterproof plano box recently really like that thing fits perfectly in there. For the sonar, this is a Lawrence Elite 7Ti2 touchscreen. This is powered by a sealed lead acid battery 
that I believe is 15 amp hours, 12 volts. For my sonar attachment, I'll use an inch and a half ram ball directly coupled to the head unit, a double-ended socket joint, and then the H-rail mounted inch and a half ram ball. Forward rod holder is the Yak Attack Omega Pro. <laughs> it's directed off of the other side, the opposite rail, which is much more stable for trolling or for fishing for when you're getting a big bite. Um, if it's on this side pointed outwards, then you're going to be reaching outside of the boat to pull the rod out. Here, as it's going across the bow, you just reach directly in front of the center of gravity of the boat, which makes it very easy to uh, handle those big bites. We got the reliable products, fish, kayak kill bag, seen some action. Looking inside my hatch, I'll have a dry bag to keep uh, dry clothes or electronics or other things as I'm going in and out of the surf. I'll put my fish finder inside of here. And then once I'm outside the surf, I'll remove it from the dry bag install it in the cockpit. But uh, the hatch has a good seal, but it's not waterproof. So I would say if you're bringing any electronics or clothes that you don't want to get wet, it'll go up here. Um, also, if I don't have my kill bag, I'll throw my lunch up here. So. One thing's really important, always have your Mirage Drive leashed in. So that way, even if this thing goes overboard, it's still attached. No problem. Underneath the seat, I have my stainless steel game clip ready to go with a leash and stainless steel carabiner for easy attachment and detachment when needed. Underneath, we got the wheelies. I think these are the biggest ones. I'm not sure what size these are, let's see. They're rated to 55 kilograms or 121 pounds, 30U. So uh, these things have worked great so far. My kayak pretty much stays on the wheels. It's hoisted up onto a cooler and onto a bucket with some high density foam pads. And so you can see that the wheels have no weight on them and then when I go to go fishing I'll just wheel it right off of there and into the back of the truck with the bed extender all right there you go that's my setup that I use in La Jolla it's pretty simple I like to keep it nice and clean this rail is totally free of any obstruction because I'm always fighting the fish off of this rail starboard starboard rail and all my attachments are on the port rail Alright, so that's how I set up my Hobie Pro Angler 14. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions about this setup or any equipment that I use. I'll include a link for as much of this equipment I can down below. The channel just hit 1,000 subscribers, so thank you all so much for subscribing. And If you guys haven't yet subscribed to the channel, go ahead and sub now. Thanks a lot, and we will see you at the launch.